Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is uh, Sebastian Yena, Deputy Director of Epidemiology and the National Incident Manager Cholera Nigeria Center for Disease Control. I'm here with my colleague, Dr. Kelly, the Coordinator for Research, NCDC Nigeria. Our campaigns actually started earlier in 2017 with a reactive uh, exercise in uh, Borno State, where we are currently facing uh, insurgency. Uh, local governments of uh, Meduguri, Konduga, Jere, we are targeted for these uh, campaigns with other additional three LGS. So in total, we had uh, about one million doses deployed for this exercise. Now, after the 2017 encounter with OCV, we had to prioritize our efforts towards uh, eliminating <laughs> cholera by having a DEX review earlier in 2018 uh, with support of the GTFCC. Uh, we looked at our historical data and came up with 105 hotspots cholera local governments. Nigeria has uh, 36 states and one federal capital with a total of 774 local governments. So 105 are actually high risks for cholera. <coughs> so a calendar was uh, developed for nine phases campaign towards uh, cholera vaccination from 2018 to 2022. By July 2018, we were able to engage three states in campaigns, uh, prominently Yobe, Baoshi, and Adama State, where over three million doses of the vaccine was actually utilized. However, by the end of 2018, uh, Nigeria was able to also immunize uh, 10 local governments. <coughs> Two uh, of the LGAs are still pending with their second round doses that uh, the vaccine was not yet obtained by the GTFCC. The perceived impact of this uh, campaign is not yet done. Uh, we plan to do an impact assessment. However, we are faced with challenges of funding and the technical know-how on how to do this impact assessment. So this was a major setback for the campaigns we have had so far. Also, it is of note that uh, Virtually all these campaigns were done after the outbreak. And like I said, uh, for the Borno area, it was an emergency compromise area where we still have challenges of security, mostly in northern part of Nigeria. So we have the major uh, Boko Haram and also have uh, banditries, kidnappings in Nigeria now. Acceptance is moderate. Uh, mostly among the Muslim communities in northern Nigeria and also the adults. It's a similar scenario we face when we introduce the OPV campaign. So it's still an issue of non-compliance among uh, the northern Muslim communities. Our plan is for early application to the GTFCC. Uh, one of the major setbacks was getting the vaccines from the Global Tax Force and also the operational costs which come along with this application. Funding for operational research is one of the issues we are trying to prioritize. That's why uh, my colleague here represented is in charge of coordinating research. So we have tried to approach the welcome grant. Unfortunately, we couldn't get uh, last, uh, last year. We are still working on it. We want to also strengthen coordination efforts uh, with the watch uh, stakeholders. Series of meetings have been ongoing and uh, a lot of uh, work is on that. Strengthening surveillance, case management, risk communication, which are already prioritized in our five-year national strategic plan is one of the support we want the GTFCC to look into. Most especially also getting this uh, plan implemented. This plan was submitted uh, about three months ago to the GTFCC for review in line with the framework. Uh, I have not received any feedback. Uh, SCDC, like I said, has developed this plan, which is going to run from 2018 to 2023. However, a lot of effort is being done by the watch sector. The Federal Ministry of Water Resources actually has what we call the Partnership for Expanding Water Sanitation and Hygiene, which was launched by His Excellency the President of Nigeria in 2017, 
we're looking into this document to see how we improve water supply by 100% by, by 2030 and also open the vacation free by 2025. Effort is already going on in this area by the launching of the National Plan for WASH, uh, 